Hello, it's me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And on this 21st day of August, um, we are celebrating the memorial of Pope St. Pius X. And uh, I just, uh, it, it captured my attention when just given that we, we just ended a Eucharistic Congress and we continued in this uh, Eucharistic revival. I just thought about what Pope Pius X did for the church. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, he was uh, Pope, came Pope in 1903. Uh, his name was Giuseppe Sarto before he was Pope and then took on the name of Pius X. Now, he, in 1910, he, he allowed for children, he changed the, the age of reception of communion. So he allowed for children at the age of reason to receive communion. So communion then went from age 12 to age 7, which was, is considered the age of reason. And not only that, he encouraged uh, frequent reception of our Lord Jesus Christ in, in the Holy Eucharist, in communion. Now consider that even the precepts of the church today, the six precepts of the church, one of them uh, calls for reception of, of communion at least once a year, especially around Easter. And one of the other precepts also calls for confession, at least during the season of Lent. Now, th that's what used to be the practice. Uh, somehow the church had gone to where individuals received communion maybe once a year you know even though some many would go to church many times they they were they they went more to see the lord during consecration and, and just see the lord lifted up but beyond that many received the lord only once a year but the pope encouraged frequent reception of communion saying that it was the probably the the shortest and safest way to heaven imagine that uh, he realized that this was our path our good shepherd the lord leading us and he gives us his very self to strengthen us in this amazing sacrament his very body and blood soul and divinity uh, given to us to encourage us on our journey to strengthen us on the journey that leads to heaven and he figured that even children should have that privilege, that blessing of receiving the Lord. And he actually also encouraged them even to, to spend silence, you know, solitude before the Lord in the tabernacle. Imagine that and hoping, I think in all this, one of his sermons, hoping that the, the children would affect their parents, uh, maybe draw them back to frequent reception of the Lord, frequent reception of Holy Communion. So. This drew me to ask, you know, even asking myself, all this, you know, we came to this Eucharistic revival, Eucharistic Congress, the church again here in the United States trying to call us, to invite us to see the blessing we have before us, this real presence of the Lord our God in this most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. How, are, how is your life in relation to this sacrament? How is your life? And this is not just saying a sacrament in relation to the Lord. Indeed, we see this Lord in everyone we encounter. The love of God has flown into us and the love of God, we are invited to share this love, not only towards God in how we relate to God and worship and knowing that he's only our God, that we give all our heart, all our strength, but also love this God in our neighbor, love this God as we love ourselves. But those are not easy things to do. Those are not easy lives to live without the Lord himself help, helping us. And he has given us the provisions we need for this, indeed the sacraments, you know, Definitely the sacrament of reconciliation that heals us from our sinfulness and, and takes us back to that original reality as children of God, saints of God. But then we struggle to remain that saints. And then ultimately, this sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist, where he comes to us, his very self, his body and, soul, body and blood, soul and divinity, to strengthen us. Thanks be to God for Pope Pius, not only who figured that children too should be able to receive this sacrament early, but also that we should be open to receive this Lord as, as often as we can. Now, you know, once a week is great Sunday, that's the day of the Lord. But if you can go on a week, a daily basis, yes. Now, not as a collector, you know, I've had situations where people missed mass, but then they come, and this is not even on a Sunday, they come and they say, oh, can you go and get, give me communion? 
and I had to tell them, no, you know, this is not a pill, you know, that, you know, your daily pill. But I think even your desire, you know, you, you couldn't make it, but your desire says a lot. And the Lord you received maybe yesterday or the day before, it blesses you and is with you. Maybe just say a prayer. But yes, what a blessing that we have before us. What is your attitude? Do you see the, 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 the grace, the privilege? And maybe today, as you pray, we pray for the intercession of St. Pope Pius X. Let us be grateful, grateful for this gift that we receive so often. This gift that reminds us not only to be like the gift, like the one we receive, but also to love like the one we receive loves us, knows us so well, we who are even sinners, but still comes, humbles himself to come into us, to live with us, to strengthen us, to walk with us until we reach the promised land, eternal life in heaven. Friends, brothers and sisters, love because you are loved. Amen.